Well, good evening and uh, happy Father's Day from Canada. And I hope you've had a, a good Sunday. And not everyone has happy memories of their fathers. I'm aware of that. I've met some people. I've had, I have happy memories of my dad. Uh, he wasn't always a Christian. He, was, he became a Christian in his 20s. And um, he lived until he was 80. And uh, he lived a happy, joyful life of fruitfulness. But I'm aware that um, I've met many people who have not happy memories of their father. And uh, I can assure you of this, that in all the hurts and pains of life, if you come to know your heavenly father, everything that an earthly father failed to be, your heavenly father will be everything you ever wanted in an earthly father and infinitely more than that. I've been a Christian for quite a number of years. I wasn't born a Christian and I'm not a Christian because I was brought up in a Christian church or anything like that. I have a definite, precise, personal, precious moment when I became a Christian. And so that's what this little session is about. What are, where are you in life? And so we're going to read from the Bible and uh, the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. And it's the Apostle Paul writing. And he writes, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. That's what I want you to think about for a few minutes this evening. I want you to ask yourself, Am I rich? Am I rich? I'm not talking about how many dollars you have in the bank or anything like that. Do you consider yourself rich or poor? From the Bible and from personal experience, I can tell you that true riches are found in Christ alone. There are many rags to riches stories. But the story of Jesus in the Bible is a story of his love of riches to poverty. Not rags to riches, but riches to poverty. The Bible verse that we read said, Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. You know, Christ became poor. When deity stepped into humanity, when Christ became man, born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, lived in Capernaum, proved his deity, proved that he was God in human flesh. But for him to step into human flesh, Christ became poor. God himself, stepping into time and taking upon himself flesh, born a baby in Bethlehem, raised as a boy in Nazareth. Christ became poor. But I want you to think of for a moment about his poverty. You probably know the story of the shame and the miserable treatment that Jesus Christ received at the hands of his own creatures. The story of the cross. And he was willing to become poor in that regard. Who for? Was that something that overtook him by surprise? Or is the cross a part of his mission to planet Earth. Let me tell you, the big story of the Bible is that the cross was his mission to planet Earth. That's why he came. He came 
to go to the cross to die for our sins. We could never help ourselves. I know people try to turn a corner in life and try to make amends. And some do make tremendous improvements in their life. And some are able to, through community service and certain sentences, they can clean their records off on earth. Some can get a pardon from, from officials. But what we're talking about tonight is much, much more than a record on earth. We're talking about God's holy record. And every one of us had a sin record. But I can tell you this. It has nothing to do with me being a Canadian. It has everything to do with Christ dying on the cross for my sins. And I have a moment in my life, personal, precious, precise moment, when I received Christ as my personal Savior. You don't need to remain in the poverty of your sins. You could come into the incredible riches in Christ. So the writer of this verse here that we've been reading, his name was Paul. Paul had an extensive resume. He had an impressive pedigree. He had one of those wow resumes. He was connected. He was respected. He had access to people in places of influence and, and power in the, in the ancient world. So Paul was a, an influential intellect. But he discovered how poor he really was. I wonder if you ever thought about whether you are rich in life or whether you're poor. Ephesians chapter 3 in the Bible, Paul said, To me, who am less than the least of all saints, this grace was given, that I, I want you to get this, that I should preach among the, the nations, the Gentiles, the unsearchable. I want you to think of that word, the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable, the unfathomable, the incalculable, the inexhaustible riches of Jesus Christ. You know, experts, they appraise rare diamonds, gems. They put their value on them. Works of art are evaluated and they're appraised and price tags are attached. Even for our homes, property appraisers, they put a value on houses and land. Finance people try to determine the net worth of the world's wealthiest people. I just looked up this afternoon knowing I was going to be talking to you this evening. In 2019, do you know how many millionaires there are in the United States? 18.6 million millionaires in 2019 in your country. How many billionaires? 621 billionaires. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you are one. Now, just personally speaking, I'm not listed in, in the Forbes annual list. I'm not mentioned in Investopedia or Fidelity Investments. But I am a billionaire. I know I drive a 2013 Elantra. Elantra, if you want to make it sound like a really luxury car, Elantra. And we also have a 2019 Kia Optima. Oh, you say, and you're a billionaire? Yes, I am a billionaire. You say, really? I want to talk to you after this session is over. Nah, I'm a spiritual billionaire. I am infinitely wealthy, not monetarily, uh, not in material things. I'm looking around here and are looking at our tiled ceilings and our little house that's probably appraised at 140000 or something like that. 
but I am a spiritual billionaire because I know Christ as my savior. You see, a Christian's wealth cannot be measured. No value can be assigned to what is ours in Christ. Jesus told the story of a man who was rich materially, temporally, but he was dirt poor spiritually, poverty stricken in life and for eternity. Jesus told the story about him. And that's what I want you to think. You may be better off than I am, and we are uh, materially. You may have more money in the bank. You may live in a nicer home, may drive nicer vehicles. But are you rich toward God? Are you rich spiritually? I'm telling you, I am. And I, I go to sleep at night thanking God for all that is mine in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what was this story that Jesus told in Luke's gospel, chapter 12? And it starts around verse 16. And one rendering goes like this. I'll read it to you. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. You can almost see him sitting out on his patio, looking over the acres of land and looking at his buildings. And he thought, man, I'm a great wealthy farmer. What should I do? And their old rocking chair is going back and forth. And he thinks, I know. I will tear down my barns and I'll build bigger barns. Then I'll have enough room to store all my wheat and my other goods. And I'll say to myself, Sit back and I'll have this little discussion with myself. My friend, you have stored enough away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And then Jesus said the story goes like this. But God said to him, you fool, you will die tonight. Then who will get everything that you worked for? And then he said, yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. And again, I want to ask you then, do you have? a rich relationship with God. I do. And that's why I can commend Jesus Christ to you. This is not something that I've been trying out for the last, you know, since Christmas. I have known the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior for a number of decades. Some people have called me a fossil, but I'm not quite that old, but I have known Christ as my savior for 50 years. That's a pretty good test, isn't it? In those 50 years, we've had a lot of tears in our faces. Just like everyone else, we've been, had experienced the ups and downs in life, the vicissitudes of life. But I can tell you through the storms and the tears of life, I have an inner peace through Jesus Christ, a calmness, an island of tranquility inside while the storms may rage around. That's what Christ offers me in this life, a personal relationship with God through personal faith in the Lord Jesus. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's what being rich towards God means. So the verse says, Paul wrote, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich yet for your sakes, he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich. He has inexhaustible riches to give us. If you would come to him tonight, he has inexhaustible riches for you. This verse is pointing out that he himself is the richest the riches of Christ, 
These riches can never, ever be exhausted. The longer one knows them, whether it's 10 years or 20 or 30 or 40 years, the longer one knows Christ, the more riches he or she enjoys. Like a sprawling treasure house with multiple doors to open. And every room is wow, full, full. Christians for centuries have been feasting on the storehouses of wealth in Christ, and there is no depletion. The rooms are as full as they were at the very commencement, at the beginning. Do you know what I'm talking about? Paul told the Christians in Corinth, it was a large city in modern day Greece, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, he says, because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I hope you know that I'm not boasting in Peter Ramsey tonight. I am not boasting in a church that I attend here in Canada, nor is our boast in the Midland Park Gospel Hall. What we want to have your thoughts focused on is a person called Jesus Christ. I'm rich. A Christian has wise insights that others do not have. Some of us may be lacking when it comes to nuclear fusion and molecular science and bio, bioethics, geopolitics, all of those things. But a Christian has insights into life and for eternity that others do not appreciate. A Christian, here's another part of the Christian wealth. A Christian is declared righteous by God, not our own righteousness. You know, I try to give tips every once in a while going through the coffee drive through or at a restaurant. I try to leave nice tips, not meager tips. And uh, occasionally I will cut the neighbor's grass. But I try to pay, we try to pay all our taxes. But that has nothing to do with me getting to heaven. I am solid and secure in eternal life this evening because of Christ Jesus. Not my own righteousness. I have been made righteous. Christ himself is our righteousness. A Christian has no personal holiness, but in Christ we are sanctified and in Christ we are redeemed. There's no doubt about our future. I'm not biting my fingernails thinking, am I going to make it to heaven? When the big um, heart stops ticking, where will I be? When they rush over and they grab my pulse, will I make it to heaven? That is the furthest thought from my mind. That is all settled. I am in Christ. And my future is secure. You see why I can say I'm a spiritual Billionaire, ours is a full redemption, body, soul, and spirit. A Christian will be with Christ forever, a hundred years, a thousand years. A Christian is rich because we have life. People sometimes that are frust uh, frustration, they'll say, if someone has annoyed them, you've heard the expression, ah, oh, get a life. You've heard that expression, get a life. A Christian has the life. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 10. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you think I'm a loser because I have Christ? Do you think I'm all bad out of shape and living some cramped, miserable, narrow life because I am a Christian? As I said in 2020, I can testify to this fact that I am enjoying my life in Christ and knowing him personally as my savior. Jesus said in John chapter six, verse 35, whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You know, people say, well, I'm on a spiritual journey. I'm always thinking around the corner, the next corner, I will find satisfaction. I'm not looking for anything around the corner. I have Christ. 
I am 100% satisfied with Jesus Christ. I am no longer searching in life. I'm learning, but I'm not searching. My search has come to an end in Jesus Christ. To the empty, forlorn, sad, dejected, sinning woman. Maybe you've read the story in John's Gospel, chapter 4. She had tried many things in life. She knew many men in life. She had tried all of that kind of stuff. And there was a young man around the age of, in his early 30s, sitting on the well that day when she came for water. And that young man said to her, the water that I shall give you shall be in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Can you imagine how her eyes must have opened as that young man, his name was Jesus. And he kept, he said to her, look at it. This is the only water you ever drink from this well, material, temporal water, physical water. If this is the only water you ever experience, you'll always be thirsty. And if the only water you ever drink are, is the fun and the weekend pleasure and the successes in life, you'll still always be thirsty. But if you get a drink of the water that I shall give you, it will be like an inner fountain constantly bubbling up and bubbling over. That's what a Christian has. All the riches and the treasures of God are in Christ. He comes into the life and into the heart and he dwells inside. The Bible says in Colossians 1 verse 27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can you relate to this? There are a lot of nominal Christians. People who go to a Christian church and they say, yeah, I, I'm a Christian. But a genuine, true blue, authentic Christian is one who is Christ and they're satisfied. Is there anything in this universe to be compared to what a Christian has? To be loved by the Son of God? It's absolutely amazing. That's why Paul said the unsearchable riches of Christ. You know, people don't thrive when they have no sense of belonging. When they're unattached. That's why in this, on this particular day, Father's Day, if you're on social media at all, perhaps you saw some people venting about their detachment from an earthly father. When they felt unloved, not loved. Let me tell you, a Christian is attached. A Christian has an in-house comforter, a guidance counselor, a protector, an energizer, the Holy Spirit himself. And in, in what other ways is a Christian rich and wealthy? A Christian has heart rest, peace. The search is over, as I said. The restlessness is gone. The burden has been lifted. A Christian has been forgiven and the guilt is all removed and they know they're fully accepted in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see how special this is? The Lord Jesus is inviting you this evening. Jesus said in Matthew 11 verse 28, come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. A Christian is rich because we have peace. You know, um, some people think, well, I'm not that impressed with, with Christians. Um, my view of Christians, with the exception of a few that I know personally, but I generally think Christians are ignoranimouses. Weak-minded, ill-informed, simple folk. And there are a lot of people who are very dismissive of those who, who know God and have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They say, people say they're unenlightened, narrow-minded, social misfits. They have very little to offer society at large. I don't know what you think of Christians, but let me tell you, I was just working on a, a story that I put on our website, heavenforsure.com. Just put it on the, on the website just, this, uh, just a couple of days ago. Rosalind Wright Picard. She's a, 
a lead professor in her field at um, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She's working on programming robots with human-like emotions. Her research is known around the world. In 2019, Rosalind Picard received perhaps the highest honor in the professional world of engineering. She's in the National Academy of Engineering. She wasn't always a Christian. She was once an atheist. And she mocks simple-minded Christians too. In fact, that's where the word ignoramus came and why it came into my mind. That's what she thought of them. That was her own word. They're a bunch of ignoramuses. And she didn't want to have anything to do with Christians. She was an intellect. She was into the big things in life. But her next door neighbor, a doctor, medical doctor and his wife, gave Rosalind Picard a Bible. And they asked her to read it. And initially inside, you thought, I can't read that book of fables. That's for simple-minded folk. It's just a compilation of disconnected, disjointed thoughts. Absolutely nothing in that that any brilliant person should ever be bothered with. But it was a gift. And if she was this open-minded intellectual, she shouldn't close her mind to one book that is the world's best-selling book, still in 2020 it is. The, you can check that afterwards. It still is the most, the best-selling book in all the world of all times, and in 2020, it's still the best-selling book. And Rosalind McCart said, I, if I'm really an open-minded um, uh, rising intellect, I need to at least be able to say I read the book. And the doctor said, read one proverb, the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom in the Old Testament, Read one chapter, one proverb a day, and she did. And she found herself strangely drawn to the book, and it wasn't lightweight. She found there, was a, there were a lot of serious things to consider. She was so intrigued by the book that she went out and bought another Bible with a more modern-day translation, and she started to read it. She read it from cover to cover. They invited her to church. She didn't want to go to church. And then another... A climbing intellectual. He was also good at football and basketball. He invited her to church and she had read the Bible now at least once. And she went and she listened. And then she went back and she found out more about what the Bible said. And she was quite intrigued with the Bible. She said, I feel God was speaking to my heart as I read his word. She was attracted to the book. But she said, I can't be narrow-minded. So she started visiting all other kinds of world religions. And she checked out synagogues and mosques and temples and other holy sites and read other holy books. But there was something about the Bible that she could not ignore. One Sunday, she, was go she went to a service at the Christian church. And the pastor explained the difference between believing there is a God and following God, having a relationship with God. And he said, you know, who is the Lord of your life? He said, human beings want to be the Lord of their own lives. They want to be the captain of their own ships. And that's exactly what she had been up until that point. But she understood on this particular day that she needed the Lord in her life. And very simply, Picard yielded. She said, Jesus Christ, I ask you to be Lord of my life. And that very day she received Jesus Christ as her personal savior. She said, this is her own words. I once thought I was too smart to believe in God. Now I know I was an arrogant fool who, a fool who snubbed the greatest mind in the cosmos, the author of all science mathematics, art, and everything else there is to know. Today, I walk humbly. Having received the most undeserved grace, I walk with joy alongside the most amazing companion anyone could ask for, filled with desire to keep learning and keep exploring. She is currently a lead professor at MIT. She is discovering 
the riches that are in Jesus Christ. I wonder, do you know anything about this? As I draw this message to a close, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian has a peace that passes all understanding. A Christian has joy. A Christian has a bright future. Oh, I know Christians don't always have an easy road. If you ever turn on your TV and you watch one of those mega pastors collecting your money and saying, if you come to Jesus and if you give lots of money so I can buy a new a new jet and a new vehicle. If you come to Jesus, your life will be happy forever and you will never have another problem and you will never get cancer and you will just get richer and richer and richer. Turn it off, turn it off. That's not what Jesus talked about. Jesus told the Christian, if you follow me, you will have tears in this life. Maybe you know Christians who have suffered sickness and illness, lost loved ones, had difficulties in their family, difficulties at work, lost their jobs, maybe got COVID-19. I don't know who you know in your life. But Jesus said, through your blinding tears, you will have me. That is true wealth. And in order for me to be rich in Christ, there was one who became poor. Christ became poor. The Lord Jesus went to the cross. And beyond the spit and beyond the nails, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, he suffered for our sins. First Corinthians 15 verse 3 says, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and thank God he was raised from the dead. You can go to on spiritual pilgrimages and you can find the remains, maybe the ashes or the dust of other great people, prophets. You cannot find the remains of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, suffered for sin, accomplished God's will, paid sin's debt in full, died, was buried, and as one expression of God's complete satisfaction that what Jesus did on the cross was absolutely sufficient to take away Peter Ramsey's sins and your sins. Jesus was raised from the dead and the Lord Jesus Christ is alive in 2020. Do you know him personally as your savior? He became poor that you could be rich. This evening, I can tell you that I am rich in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you would open your Bible and discover the Lord Jesus Christ and embrace him personally as your savior, you too could have the peace, could have the joy, could have the calmness, the serenity, the tranquility, the purpose in life, the meaning in life fulfillment. You could have all of that. You could be anchored in life. Happy in this life, enjoying a relationship. But also in this life, looking forward to the next life with absolute confidence, absolute insurance. I just would commend the Lord Jesus Christ to you this evening. Now we're just going to close in prayer and then there will be some announcements made. Thank you for listening. It's been a privilege to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. I don't know whether we'll ever meet down here. Will I meet you in heaven? If you trust Christ, we will meet again. Let's pray.